Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Call to the Cross, a home edition, home office edition of Call to the Cross. As always, Call to the Cross is a podcast about all things Jesus. And uh, I just want to take a little time to talk with you today out of the book of Samuel. And uh, it's really on my mind because I think we live in a time much like the days of Samuel's early childhood. You know that God called Samuel from an early age. Uh, you know, we all know the story how Hannah had really sought God for a child and God gave her Samuel and uh, how the Lord spoke to him in the middle of the night as a, as a wee lad. And finally he said, hear my Lord. And God began to speak to Samuel about the call in his life. But as Samuel began to get a little age on him, uh, the house of God had fallen into such collapse They've fallen into such disrepair. And I'm not talking about the physical structure itself. I'm talking about the spiritual condition of Israel. Eli, who had been a judge and a faithful priest to God, had gone to a place of complacency. And he had turned the ministry over to his sons. And we we all know what happened with them guys. Uh, they were not faithful ministers. They were not faithful to the call of God, to the anointing of God that was on their father's life. Matter of fact, they weren't faithful to the God that their father served and they begin to turn from God. And the, and with that, with the fall of the ministry, you saw the fall of the people. You saw the corruption in the ministry. You seen corruption in the people. And we all know that, that wonderful story from the book of first Samuel, whenever the children of Israel, you know, were beginning to be beset by the Philistines and, and they said, hey, man, let's get the ark of God out here. Let's let's get the ark of God. And let's make great noise and shout. And, man, we know how to do it. We've been in this thing forever. And uh, much, much like our fathers did when they crossed over from Egypt's land and sang the horse and the rider and tossed it to the sea, we've been taught this all our lives. Let's go out here and let's just get down on our greatest Christian party we can throw. But it didn't turn out there in 1 Samuel chapter 4 the way that they thought it would. They had the ark of God. They had the songs. They had the sound. And it was even enough to fool their enemy. The, the bulk of those Philistines, when they heard that sound in the camp, man, their hearts were fearful. They're like, oh God, what's this noise we hear? Those, those Hebrews are at it, man. They're singing them songs. They're shouting that shout. And we know that they serve mighty gods, which of course they we know that they don't, obviously didn't know the theology very well because they put plural in there. But they said, well, they, these are those mighty gods. These are the gods that overthrew Pharaoh and led them out of Egypt's land and overcome all their enemies on their way into this land of ours. Said, oh, it's, we're, we're afraid. Well, our, our bones are shaking within us. But one of those Philistines, I don't know if he's an old guy that might have been around when the real deal was around, but he said, stop your crying. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. He said, quit yourselves like men. He said, gird up, let's go. Let's go fight these guys. In other words, kind of put it in a modern vernacular, you know, a sound ain't never whooped nobody. A noise ain't never whooped nobody. Let's go see if they got what they're screaming about and yelling about and talking about. And so these guys go, and we know the rest of the story if you've read the Bible. And if you haven't, go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 4 and read it there. But the Philistines went in there and come to find out that all the Hebrews had was noise. Now, here's the question on my heart tonight that I want to ask you. Is the party enough? Is the, is the party enough? You know, the party the Christian party is, is the sound of church and the rituals of church and all the little uh, accoutrements of church and religion. Is it enough for you? Is it enough for me? Is it enough to save this world? Well, friend, it don't take a genius to look around and see it's not. It's not. God is looking for some men. Oh, Lord, how I want to be that man. And I'm sure there are many of you out there listening that want to be that man, that want to be that woman, to obey God in this hour, to preach a real gospel, to keep preaching the true cross of Jesus Christ, to keep preaching the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus. It's sad, friend, when we can turn on 
so-called religious program and, and never hear the name of Jesus mentioned one time. To never hear anybody talk about, you know, his crucifixion, which is the central message to this gospel of ours. You know, several years ago, um, as you know, some of you know that I also teach. And I was teaching in a, a public school classroom many years ago. And we were talking, teaching about the Roman Empire. And we had brought up something about crucifixion, you know, as a form of punishment. And this young lady asked me, she said, crucifixion, what's that? And, of course, I was bewildered. I'm like, well, do you go to church? She said, yes, every Sunday. Now, I want you to think about that. Every Sunday, she went to church. And not one time, not one time heard the message of the crucifixion. She never heard about that bloody sacrifice on that cross that bled and died for you and me. And it was a Christian church that she went to. And she never heard the message of the crucifixion. Folks, that's one small account from one tiny little town in North Florida. How many little towns like that in churches all over this country, in fact, all over this world, that no longer preach the crucified Savior and the resurrected King? My, my, my. My dear friend, Brother Keith Collins, said it so eloquently when he said that this modern day religion, this modern day Christian religion, we preach Jesus the Santa Claus. You know, Jesus the, you know, the gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy, Jesus. You know, people talk about, they use the phrase prosperity gospel. There's no such thing as a prosperity gospel. There's prosperity in the Lord as your soul prospers. We won't get into that. But there's this thing as a prosperity gospel. There's only one gospel. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the salvation message of Jesus Christ, the death, the burial, the resurrection. That's repentance, baptism, and the infilling of the Spirit, all those things. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no other gospel. There's no other message. There's no other way. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Folks, I know that many people in our country sit around and not just our country, but many countries, we sit around our dinner tables and we lament about the condition of our world. And we lament about the condition of our countries. And it's almost like we wonder, well, Lord, what's, what can we do? What's going on? Well, look at the correlation. Look at the correlation, folks, of the farther people get away from foundational principles of Christianity the farther away that people get from the gospel, the more corrupt that our world becomes. And the Lord, he told us that, didn't he? He talked about the last days in the scripture. He talked about how the, there would be a great falling away. He didn't say there'd be a great lack of profession. He didn't say there wouldn't be any more churches or any more preachers. But he did say there'd be a falling away. We, sh we, should, we should live, we should live in the most enlightened time in history. We've got more ways to preach the gospel than ever before. We've got so many tools that we could use to get the gospel message out to people. But alas, we, we waste it frivolously so often. And I know there are people out there preaching the gospel. I know there are people on podcasts like this or in television broadcasts or radio broadcasts that are still preaching the salvation message of Jesus Christ. But I just want to appeal to the individual because I'm not really talking to uh, the guy that has all the, you know, the, the network stuff. I'm talking to everyday people like me and you. We are the broadcast medium of the gospel. Witness to your friends, your neighbors, your family members that don't know Jesus. And it don't have to be something crazy or out of this world. It's just the gospel. That Jesus loved you enough to die on the cross. To give his life for you. That's how much he loved you. Even knowing that so many people would reject him. He still gave his life on the cross. To give them an opportunity to hear that message. And to give their life to him. Folks, I love Jesus today. And I know this has been 
uh, not as long as our typical uh, longer form podcast, but this is what's on my heart today. It's just to share this with you, that it's it's high time that we get a burden just to tell people about Jesus. Not asking you to move mountains and uh, uh, create fireworks. Just tell people about Jesus. Share Jesus with people. Every time you get an opportunity, I know, I know because I'm a Christian. I know those of you that live that life, as I have, you've had people come up to you at work and say, hey, pray with me about this. That's that light shining, man. Keep shining it. My brother uh, shared with me here a few months ago about even on his job, this uh, desperate and dire need in someone's life. And they, they came to him. Of all the people, of all the people in that place of employment, they came to him. Why? Because he shines that light of Jesus. So keep shining it. Keep shining the light of Jesus. Keep telling people about the Lord and his death his burial, and his resurrection and how that he is going to resurrect us with him one day when it's all said and done. Folks, be not dismayed by the darkness of this world. Don't be dismayed by the falling away because where sin abounds, the Bible said grace much more abounds. Where darkness is, brother and sister, light shines greatest in darkness. So I know there are tough times, but guess what? God's got a tough people. Amen. I love you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that, Lord God, this message would go forth and touch someone's heart. God, we're not trying to be pretty. We're not trying to be flamboyant. God, we're not trying to do anything that would cause fireworks and sparks to go off. God, we just want people to be encouraged to keep living for you. We want people, Lord, to be encouraged to keep holding on through the fiery trial. We want people to be encouraged to keep preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Lord, don't let us be discouraged by the big shots that refuse to preach the gospel anymore. Lord, that's neither here nor there to us. We'll be faithful. God, we'll keep your word. Lord, you said in that same part of uh, the book of 1 Samuel that ere the lamp of God went out into the temple, went out of the temple, that light quit shining. Air means just before or just, just before that light would go out. God, you raised Samuel up for such a time as that. And Lord, we may feel like we're in that time that the lamp of God, the light of God is flickering ever dimmer. But God, you've called a people out of a people. You've called the person listening to this podcast to be the one, Lord, to breathe fresh fire into that flame. Help us all, God, to do it. God, we are thankful. We give you praise and glory and honor for it all. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you for listening to Call to Cross today. God bless you.